Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. We recently just got a Nintendo Direct and a State of Play on the same day. That does not happen often. Normally these companies like to space out their announcements, especially from other competition, so that they can have their own little media bubble. Honestly, this was bound to happen though, because this stuff is planned from probably months ago and they just found a date and they're like oh yeah this is a pretty good date right before Tokyo Game Show and yeah they just so happened to be on the same day. I'm not going to be really comparing the two because I mean I like the Nintendo Direct a little bit more but only because I'm more of a Nintendo fan. While I do love PlayStation IPs like God of War and Sly Cooper, PlayStation doesn't really care about Sly Cooper so Nintendo's my favorite. But on a serious note, the Nintendo Direct was okay. I'll be a little bit more generous. It was good. C plus, B minus area. I personally enjoyed a lot of the announcements, but man did the pacing of this show, it was all over the place. And yes, one of those parts was when Miyamoto was talking about a mobile game. On the other hand, the state of play, while the pacing was better in my opinion, the announcements weren't as great. A lot of the stuff was things that we already knew about like Tekken 8 and God of War Ragnarok. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the presentations, starting with the Nintendo Direct. We start off the presentation with a bang, starting off with Fire Emblem Engage. Which can we talk about the name real quick? This is a weird name for a Fire Emblem game I think. It sounds more like a mobile game for some reason. Or it just sounds very mechanical. It doesn't sound fantasy like Fire Emblem is known for. Aside from the name and the goofy looking protagonist, this game looks incredible. Flapping Blossom, what's that? I personally love Fire Emblem Three Houses, but the graphics do not hold up. Heck, they weren't even really good at the time of its release. This game, however, looks great. The background and combat looks great. The environments are so colorful and so vibrant. I mean, yeah, it's not the most detailed Switch game, but shoot, this is leagues better than Fire Emblem Three Houses, in terms of graphics at least. Fire Emblem Engage introduces some pretty cool elements to the series. One huge gameplay mechanic that I'm sure everyone's going to be talking about is the fact that you can summon old heroes like Marth or Lin. This is an incredible idea, especially with the mobile game being so popular as it is. It just makes sense introducing this feature in a game like this. And it's so funny seeing these classic heroes acting as stands or personas for the main characters. I kind of love that. Maybe there's going to be some story elements that are tied to the heroes of Legend. That would be really cool. I don't really expect it. They seem to be more focused on gameplay rather than story in terms of summoning those classic characters. But I could definitely be wrong. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, how else would the mechanic even be introduced? Like, it would have to be somewhere in the story, right? I don't know, and honestly, I don't really care. I love seeing characters like Marth teaming up with the protagonist and just dealing massive attacks on the enemy. That and the character animations have seemed to be improved overall. I don't know man, this just looks so clean. I'm so ready for this game. And it's coming out really soon in January. Up next we have some small updates to go over. First up is Xenoblade Chronicles 3. And oh look, it's a new hero. The thing is, I don't really like the design of this hero. I don't know what it is about the look. Ah, it just... I like the idea of having like a mechanical being as a hero, but I just don't like this design. Also they're adding like challenge battles and all this other stuff. I've actually been playing Xenoblade Chronicles the Definitive Edition on the Switch and I'm actually really enjoying myself. Hopefully I can catch up in time for the expansion pass for Xenoblade 3. So yeah, other than commenting on the new hero's design, I don't really know what else to say. But I do have a little bit to say about Splatoon 3's new Splatfest coming up. The Splatfest this time around is, if you were to go to an island, what would you bring? Grub, fun, or gear? And me personally, I would bring gear, and I thought a lot about this. 
If you bring gear, you can use that gear to hunt for food, and you can also make it, you know, you can make fun out of something. If you bring just food, then you're going to eat all of that up, and then you're going to be, you know, starving on that deserted island. And then if you bring fun, you're just going to die. So it's gear for me. Up next, we have a brand new announcement of Octopath Traveler 2. This was pretty unexpected, actually. Not that I didn't expect Octopath Traveler 2 in the future, but I just didn't expect it in this direct. But honestly, I'm pretty happy for the fans out there that have been waiting for a sequel to Octopath Traveler. I personally didn't like the first one, so I'm not too excited for the second one. I hope they change some things, like have the characters interact more and have their stories intertwine better because that was my main issue with the first game. So if they can improve on those features, that'd be great. I would be more inclined to pick up the game and give it another shot if that was the case. Up next we have more Nintendo 64 games coming to the NSO online service. We got games like Pilot Wings 64, Mario Party, Mario Party 2, Mario Party 3, Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Stadium 2, 1080 Snowboarding, Excite Bike 64, and even GoldenEye, which is a huge game to bring on the service. But I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I was really hoping to see Game Boy in this presentation. And I know that's kinda on me because Nintendo didn't ever promise Game Boy to be added to the service, but come on man, it's right there. Adding Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance games to the platform, ugh. Please do that soon. I've been itching to play Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Season. Me personally, there's not a lot of Nintendo 64 games that I really want to play. I think they're all pretty much on the service, the ones that I want to play at least. I know that's a very personal thing, but eh. I mean, there is one game that I would really want to try out, and that is Diddy Kong Racing. I really want to play that one. Up next, we have even more updates for games which is a common theme for this Direct, but I digress. This update is for Mario Strikers Battle League, which I am a huge fan of the series, but this game did not get the support at launch like it should have. While I do appreciate the free updates, some of these characters should have been at the base roster. But it's so cool to see Diddy Kong back, but more importantly, Pauline is here, and she was my most wanted character to be added to the game. I don't know why, I just really like when they add her to these sports titles. Especially something like Mario Strikers where they could do so much with her character. And of course with these characters comes a new stage, which is actually like a planet space theme, which is really cool. And while it doesn't really make sense to add it with these characters, I'm really glad to see a stage like this. We continue the updates with Nintendo Switch Sports, and wow, I did not expect them to delay golf, that's for sure. And then we got a trailer for the Mario Kart Booster Pass, which was really nice. Although they only showed two tracks, Peach's Garden and a snow track from Tor, which looks really cool by the way. Honestly, out of all the trailers that were shown in the Direct, this one felt the most forced to me. Like, they only showed two tracks and they're like, oh, it's coming out on holiday. Like, yeah? <laughs> Can you give a specific date? Why was this in here? I, I really don't understand. They could have just left it out and I wouldn't have thought a thing. Up next was probably one of the biggest announcements of this Direct. Pigment 4, which came after the slowest, most dragged on segment of the show. Miyamoto talking about Pigment Bloom, a mobile game that came out earlier this year, I think. I don't know, it felt like it came out ages ago, but I believe it was actually earlier this year. And he just spent two minutes talking about it, which I mean, okay. Not only that, but he also mentioned the Mario movie and, you know, Nintendo World, which was really cool. But then they quickly moved over to Pikmin real quick, which just did not flow right. This whole segment was just weird and off. Up next, we got some more footage of Bayonetta 3, which was really nice. I personally am not really into the Bayonetta series, but I am happy for its fans. I mean, it does look really cool and chaotic, which is, I mean, that's Bayonetta for you. I like what they did with Bayonetta here, though. They had a short trailer here, and then they had an extended look at it at the end of the presentation, or at least, you know, in its own separate video, which was really nice. I mean, I would have rather take more Bayonetta footage 
as opposed to Pikmin Bloom talk, but what can you do? And then we got more news on stuff like Crisis Core, which is really cool. I'm really looking forward to the game. And in fact, I forgot about the game <laughs> and until it showed up in this direct. And I was like, oh yeah, this game is coming out. And then we got Tales of Symphonia remastered. Wow, I did not expect this. Yeah, I'm honestly pretty excited for this. I don't know if I'm going to get it day one, but I heard this was the best Tales game. So I'm really looking forward to at least giving this a try. And then finally, we end the direct on The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. What a name. Honestly, I love the name. It's weird. It, it's kind of like Breath of the Wild where, where it's like, yeah, I can kind of see where they're getting this name from, but you know, it, it doesn't quite click with you yet. And I still call this game Breath of the Wild, even though now we actually have a name, which is super exciting. Although I will have a complaint or two about this trailer. They didn't show a lot and they've been doing this since the announcement of this game. They really just have been taking random clips and just throwing them in there. And while yeah, it's exciting to see new information about this game because they do add new clips here and there, kind of sort of going over some of the mechanics that we'll be seeing in the game, but it's not ever explained or anything. It's just kind of thrown in there. And it's like, yeah, you can do this. I don't know, man. I was really hoping that this would be a blown out presentation. I mean, as much as they can in a 40 minute presentation. And what's weird to me is that before they'd said that they didn't mention the title of this new Zelda game because it was a spoiler of some kind. But now that they revealed the title, I have no idea what they are talking about. In the trailer, they don't really show anything that is very revealing about, you know, spoilers and the story and all that. It's just kind of weird that they would wait this long to show us the title. I don't know, man. I'm still super excited about the game, but this trailer, while it is cool to see more new stuff being added to the game, I just want to see it more in context. I want to see trailer about the story, kind of what we're getting into, but not too much, obviously. But we need to see a little bit more than what we're getting so far. Just a little, you know, just maybe give us a video more than two minutes. That'd be great. But I digress. Oh, but I can't not mention the box art, though. Oh my goodness, this is probably one of my favorite box arts ever. This is just downright gorgeous. I want this as my wallpaper for everything. This just looks so incredible. This was the biggest announcement for me. Yeah, the trailer was cool and all, but this. This and the name of the game, Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, this has me hyped. All right, next we're going to get into the PlayStation Direct or the state of play. Basically, the PlayStation Direct. The state of play was only about 20 minutes, which for me at least set some expectations. And they set them at a moderate level. Whereas the Nintendo Direct, my hype was so high. Oh, it was so high and I should have lowered my expectations. But for the PlayStation Direct, I had my expectations checked. So I actually went in and I really enjoyed what I saw. Not that I didn't enjoy the Nintendo Direct, but whereas the Nintendo Direct dragged in a lot of places, I felt like the PlayStation State of Play did a pretty good job at consistently adding new games and really kept the pace and the overall show flowing at a pretty good pace. I still like the Nintendo Direct more, but I appreciate what the State of Play was going for here. The PlayStation State of Play also started with a bang with Tekken 8. This game is running on PlayStation 5 and it looks amazing. I'm not a big Tekken guy. Heck, I've never even played a Tekken game. But this, this looks cool. I think for me personally, what gets me really excited about this game is actually the weather effects. I love how dynamic this stage is. There's particles flying everywhere. There's rain, there's tornadoes and stuff going on in the background. There's fire, there's all this crazy stuff. Lightning's flashing. There's so much going on in this scene that while it's probably a little bit distracting when you're playing, man, is it gorgeous to look at. Not only that, but the destructible 
ground when you hit your opponent and they just go crashing in the rocks and stuff oh it looks so good it's so anime i love it so yeah i'm looking forward to seeing more of tekken 8 up next we have a new yakuza game which is actually a like a dragon game i'm not really familiar with the yakuza series so forgive me for not knowing what exactly i'm looking at but from what i can gather it's a remake of an old yakuza game or a yakuza like game remade from the ground up that's set in the past yeah i don't really know much about this game but man does it look fun this samurai is going all over the place shooting people and slashing them it just looks like a ton of fun so wacky so goofy like a dragon ishin looks really fun i hope you don't have to play the rest of the yakuza series to play this game but yeah man this just looks like a ton of fun i think for me what draws me into this game rather than the yakuza series is the time period speaking of up next we have Rise of the Ronin. This gives off a similar vibe as the Like a Dragon one, except this was made by Koei Tecmo, which these developers are known for their combat. And yep, this game looks as brutal and as flashy as Koei Tecmo gets. It's very interesting that this is set in 1863. I'm not too familiar with Japanese history, so it's really interesting to go in a time period where I'm really not familiar with especially something like 1863 where they had like muskets and stuff that's really cool and it's a really interesting setting and time period for this game and last but not least you cannot end a state of play without god of war ragnarok the controller i mean yeah i was really afraid that they're just going to end it right here and there but thankfully we moved on pretty quickly from the controller which looks pretty cool but I have enough controllers as is. And we move on to the actual gameplay, which this looks so fun, man. I loved 2018's God of War, and I've been waiting ever since I hit the end credits of that game to continue Kratos and Boy's adventure. Seeing Kratos struggle as a dad gives me so much joy. I don't know why. It's just, it's like watching a robot trying to feel things. It's it's really charming in a weird way when he calls his son boy all the time. So yeah, Dad of War looks pretty good. No surprises here. And we're finally done. And these are just personal highlights again. And if you made it through this video, congratulations, because I almost didn't. Let me know down below your thoughts on both the Nintendo Direct and the state of play. Now, I'm not really interested in debating which is better or worse, because... Honestly, who cares? They were both pretty good. Nothing too crazy out there for me in both showcases. But also at the same time, they both had some pretty interesting things to show off. So please let me know down below your thoughts. And I'll see y'all next time. God bless.